Hello and welcome. In this video, I will talk about migrating your TFVC repository to Git. What you need in order to accomplish this is an Azure DevOps account or a TFS uh, version control repository. We'll need to install Shocklity, Git for Windows, and Git TFS. So there's actually two ways to do that. One is a little bit easier, um, and it's uh, part of TFS and or uh, Azure DevOps. It's the import tool, but it's easier, but it's also restricted. You can only migrate the latest, like one branch. So the one you're going to pick and you're going to have to rethink the way that you do your branching strategy in Git. So you can look at Git flow or GitHub flows. Those are two different strategies that you can maybe adapt later. This involves a tip migration. So usually you would do a get latest and then you're gonna get basically what's in there, but you can go up to uh, 180 days of history if that's what you wanna do. As long as you don't have binary assets like large files, a scientific data set, game models and all of that, then you would need to use git LFS. So large file system extension and your repo shouldn't exceed a one gigabyte in size. So all of this information is listed at the URL I have below, and there's a little bit more information as well on how to use this tool. So let's actually do a demo of that. So here I have a Azure DevOps TFVC repository, and the model that I have is um, very typical. There's a main branch with a web application in it, and then there's a dev branch with typically the same application that uh, I've, I've branched and I'm actually doing some feature change or uh, some new stuff in here. So there's a little bit of a history. There's a, it's a, a very simple repo just to show you what, what's gonna happen when we actually migrate to Git. So I have this history of changes I've made to this repository and now I just basically wanna create a new uh, Git repo with this. So part of Azure DevOps as well as TFS there's the migration tool. So what you can do is essentially you create a new repository. So the new repository is gonna be a Git repository. We're gonna give it a name. So uh, migrated uh, TFVC uh, repo, let's say. Uh, we don't really wanna git ignore file in here for now. And we're gonna basically create this. So we now have a Git repository created and uh, the documentation is actually quite good. So if we want to clone right away, we can do that. We can actually push a repository from, from our disk, which we'll do uh, in, in the next demo. And then uh, we can use the import wizard. So import, basically I just click on the import and then I want to import from TFVC. And then it's going to ask me, so what's the name of the, the repository we're going to use? So I'm just going to basically say this is going to be TFS VC to Git, which is my repository, and then main. So we want to move the main branch over to, to Git. And then I'm going to migrate my history. I'm going to take 30 days, which is fine. And I'm going to hit import. So this is going to go off, and it's basically going to read up all of our repository and it's gonna take everything in the main branch, all of our history in the main branch for our last 30 days, and it's gonna make this uh, a Git repo. So now I, my repo is over here. I can actually look and see my code. And if we look at it, we now have a Git repo with the same application I had in the other side. Uh, but now my history is Git specific, right? Um, so I can actually just look at a particular commit and I can see what the changes were for that commit. So this is basically how you would use the import wizard. Uh, it's very simple. It's gonna take one branch, move it over, and essentially you have now a Git repository that you can go and clone. So if I go back to my Git repo, I can see that I can clone it. If I wanna go here, I can do some forks, I can set up a build for it, and I can do everything that I need to do. I can even download the whole repo as a zip file, upload new files to it, et cetera, et cetera, right? So this is basically a full Git repo with history of the main branch. So now let's talk about the, let's say the harder version, which is when we wanna use Git TFS, which is a command line tool that basically will go in and look at all of our files uh, in our repository, including all of our branches, and it's gonna to try to replicate all the changes into a Git repository, including 
uh, the creation of branches uh, if that's what we have in our our uh, our tfvc repository so git stores history as a snapshot in time as opposed to a discrete operation so it's going to be a little different and it um, the git tfs will need to figure out all these things and as an example here uh, if you had a file called a and you renamed it the file b that'll likely create two uh, commits one uh, that file a was deleted and the next one that b was added for example so there's no direct analog for tfs label in uh, with git so you're going to have to use for example git tags and those don't do the exact same thing so if you need more information about this please go and read at the url that i have listed below uh, also merge in tfs are at a file level so essentially you can pick a file from a change set and then just migrate that one file or merge that one file to the other branch with git you can't do that so git does a whole branch merge so there's little difference uh nuance difference from between git and tfvc so you have to be aware of those when you're actually doing this this migration so again if you need more information on this uh you can go read the uh, url here and then there's a nice section on uh, how to use uh, git tfs at this uh, github url as well so in order to install git tfs um, we need to have an admin console uh, we install chocolatey so chocolatey is basically a package management tool that we can basically install any kind of third-party tools on our machine quite fast and it's going to go and look for the latest version and and update for us if we want to so in order to do that we install chocolatey first and then we can just do shoko install git tfs that'll set up everything properly uh, it'll put it in our path so that we can call it later on so how do we actually migrate? Well, we basically need a Azure DevOps TFVC repository or a general TFS repository. So we go to the command line, we go git TFS list remote branch. So with the organization, our Azure DevOps org or TFS, and that'll list all the branch and it'll give us the trunk of, you know, basically the beginning of where all of our branches are and which one we should pick when we want to clone everything. Then we're going to say clone that repository into and all its branches into a an actual git repo. And then we're going to add a new remote to our git repository in order to push it to TFS. And then we're just going to push our uh, our local repository back to TFS. So let's go ahead and do that. First we're going to start a PowerShell console as an administrator because we want to install some things on the machine, specifically Chocolatey and Git TFS. Uh, I already have Shoko install on my machine, but in order to do that, basically you would just go to the internet, type Chocolatey, go to the Chocolatey installation, and basically here we have a nice command line that we can just execute from our machine and it'll install Shoko. So I have it installed here. I can just go Shoko and just show you there. And then basically in order to install Git TFS, I would basically just go and say Shoko install Git TFS and just execute this. And it's gonna tell me I already have it installed uh, because I've, I've done it before, but essentially for you, it would just install uh, Git for Windows. So if you don't have Git for Windows install, it'll install that. And then it'll install Git TFS. All right, so I have that installed here. So now what we wanna do is go to uh, a location where we wanna basically clone our repo. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna basically start another PowerShell just as myself, because I don't need to be admin to do that. And basically just go into my source folder, uh, my repos, and then let's just make a directory CD in there. And now I have just a basic directory. And in here, we essentially want to clone our stuff. So first thing we want to do is we want to run our commands that are uh, that's going to give us the uh, all of our branches. So this is this command here. 
Um, so get TFS, list remote branch, and then we wanna see the remote branch in our project. So I can just execute this. The first time you run that, you'll get a prompt with your credentials. And once you've done it, then it stores the credential and it won't ask me again. Since I've already done that here, uh, when I run this command, I see that I have a main branch, which is, according to this, should be the trunk, because there's a star here, and then there's a dev branch that actually came from that main branch. So cloning the root branch mark with the star is the recommended approach. So now that we have that, I'm actually in the, the directory where I want to put this. So now I can just basically pick the clone command that we had. And uh, this essentially says get TFS, clone our project, get the main branch, and then get all the branches that are attached to it. So I'm going to run this. This is relatively fast here because obviously I only have eight commits, but this will go through and get all the different commits and all the different branch that you have that are basically off of that main branch here. So that might take a long, long, long while. Once all the changes are found, uh, it basically creates the, the git branches and everything. So if uh, we can see now we're in the master branch, this is a posh git uh, extension for PowerShell and it tells you which branch you're in and all of that. So if I do a directory on this, we can see that my application is up here. I am in the master branch, but there's no remote for this. This is totally local and I can work with it as any Git repository locally. Now I'd like to push this repository up to Azure DevOps so that we can uh, basically have a remote attached to it. So how would I do that? I'm gonna go back to our project and we're gonna create a new Git repository like we did originally. And again, this will create a, a Git repository for us. And now we're gonna use the command line tools that we have here. So we wanna add a remote, which is this particular repository, and we wanna push this stuff. So I'm gonna grab those two things. I'm gonna go back to my PowerShell here and basically just execute those two lines. So by executing this, I actually added a remote to my Git repository, and I pushed all of the code that I have locally up to uh, TFS, including the branches and everything. So now we can see that we have the three little bars here at the end, means that the master locally and the remote are equal, everything's the same. So if we go back to Azure DevOps, we can see that if I refresh this browser, we'll see that we now have, again, a Git repository, but this time, if I actually look, we'll see that I have a dev branch associated with it. And if I look at the history here, we'll see that we have more history, as you can see, because in the dev branch, I did a change and I merged it back. So we can see the merge happening and I can see the contents of my site. I can actually go into a particular change and see that I merged those two things together. And I have way more information that I had before. Now, again, this is quite a simple TFVC repository. There's just eight changes uh, for us to see, but uh, you can you could see where that's going. So if I pick the dev branch here and I can see that I have all of my changes and my history for that as well in that particular branch. So as you can see, migrating from TSVC to Git is not super complicated, but it can get very complicated if you have a really big repository. So make sure that you read up on all the documentation for Git TFS and or the import wizard. That should give you a good start to migrate your TFVC repository to Git. Thank you for listening.